Amen. Victory in Jesus. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. Let's stand for opening prayer, please. Lord God of heaven and earth, we praise you and bless you this morning, Father. We thank you for this day today, Lord God. We thank you for waking us up and giving us another day of life, Lord God. We acknowledge life comes for you, from you, Lord Jesus. You're the giver of life. And Lord, we just invite your presence in here this morning to come and have your way this morning, Lord God. Change hearts for you. Minister to those that know you this morning, Lord God, and we'll give you all the praise and all the glory in your precious name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, we'll do roll call. Robert Sandifer. Yes, sir. Charles Monroe. Here. Demetrius Johnson. Demetrius Johnson. No. James uh, Esterlin. George, P George Pierre, Here. John Williamson, Present. Henry Lindsay, Present. Michael Dyer, Here. Lance Goldenberg, Here. Ryan Brown, Here. Dean Danforth, Kirill Kokosha. Ko How do you pronounce it? Kirill Okay. <laughs> Edward Walsh, Here. Phil Anderson, Anderson. Paul Anderson. Present. Thank you. Uh, David Moore. Here. James uh, Manis. Here. Henry Brown. Here. Amen. James Davenport. Here. Carl Taylor. Here. Charles Duru. Jose Pacheco. Present. Dwayne Wood. Here. Glenn Harris. Present. Bobby Weiser. Here. Norman Ahill. Philip Young, Stuart Bailey, Here. Michael Zvok, Stephen Sebelia, Here. Brian Werner, Here. Kevin Golden, Here. Charles Furby, Here. Daniel Harris, Here. David McGuire, Here. Chris Gio, Here. Michael Wright, Here. Dave Warren, Kenny Pham, Ira McCoy. Jacob Ward, yeah. Dirk Vanderveer, yeah. Michael yeah. Wassel, yeah. Gino, yeah. Greg Russell, yeah. uh, Steve Gresh, yeah. Dan Gavern, yeah. Jason Smith, yeah. Giuseppe Piatto, yeah. Darren Chamberlain, yeah. Andrew Zane, yeah. Edmund Donavant, yeah. Will Goldston, yeah. James Russell, yeah. David Bell, Derek Holslander, Here. Dean Schulteis, Here. Phil Maloney, Here. James Kaysen, Here. Corey Faber, Here. Dennis O'Neill, Gregory Cook, Here. Lawrence Laverde, Rodney Burnham, Here. Frederick Matthew, Here. Omar Here. William Potat. Here. All right, before Sister Rhonda comes up, we have a birthday. Mm -hmm. Sister Rhonda. <laughs> Sister Rhonda is going to come up and lead us in some songs. Thank you. Page 
Amen. <laughs> Amen. Good singing this morning. Amen. Well, this is time if you have a prayer request. We want to pray for, for the ledger as he brings a message this morning. Continue to pray for Brother Wooten and all his needs. The Lord will help him do all he needs to do personally and, and for the mission as director. I want to pray for Jerome and Steve Lord as they are in uh, Pinellas Park this morning uh, doing Sunday school and doing the, the church service, and they'll do the service tonight at 6. So let's keep them in our prayers. Amen. Let me continue to pray for each person here on the grounds that has a job, each person that has a chore, as you all know, and I keep continuing to uh, reiterate, you know, you have to do your job unto the Lord. You know, God's placed us here, and it takes a lot for this mission to be the mission that it is. So whether you have a job, head of security, or Daniel maintenance, or in the kitchen, in the security, or the empty trash, whether you do pots and pans and do the floors, Lance keeps the chapel clean, you know, it takes a lot of people. So I want to pray for each one here that has a job and a chore, and the Lord help them to do their job and chore cheerfully unto the Lord. Sister Black, yeah. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Well, I know I'd like prayer. Who else would like prayer? Amen. Let's stand for prayer. <laughs> Reverend Wooten, would you lead us in prayer, please?
Amen. 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 All right, the ushers are coming forward and we'll take the morning offering, which goes towards the expenses of the mission. Blessed Lord, once again we bow at your throne, O oh Lord, thanking you for your grace, your mercy, your love. Lord Jesus, we thank you for all that you've done for us and all that you're doing for us every, every day of our lives. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for comforting us and guiding us and leading us into all truth. We praise you and we ask that you bless everyone in this building, for we all need you. And we praise you and thank you forever and give you all the glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for your giving, and thank you, as always, for the beautiful offertory. Sister Rhonda, our birthday girl, is going to come up and lead us in another song. Page 570, 570. <laughs>
But let's open up our heart and see what the Lord has for us this morning through Reverend Ledger. Thank you, brother. Well, are you anchored today? Thank God we can be anchored. Amen. Welcome all our guests today. Not sure I know everybody, but we're glad you're here. And uh, I was thinking this morning as we sang congregational singing, we had a, a friend who joined us for church one morning, and afterwards he made this comment. He said, you know, it was kind of nice to have congregational singing. He said, where I went, we go to church, he said, they never do that anymore. They just have all special people come in, you know, and do all the singing. And I just appreciated how many of you are participating today. I mean, the congregation really sounded good, and I thank the Lord for that. Well, let's turn in our Bibles to the book of John, chapter 1 today. John, chapter 1. And we're going to begin our reading today at John chapter 1, verse 29. Thank you for standing in reverence to God's Word. We appreciate that today. John chapter 1, verse number 29. And by the way, uh, for especially for some of you new people, if you do not have a Bible and would like a King James large print Bible... My wife and I have some available, so see one of us and get your name down and we'll get you a Bible. Okay, John chapter 1, verse 29. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto them, and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me, and I knew him not. But he that should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore I am come baptizing with water. And John bare record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. And I knew him not. But he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizes with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. Again the next day after John stood and two of his disciples and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. Father, we thank you for your word today. Would you please help us to speak and bless us with your presence and anoint us, Lord, as only you can do. And give our hearers ears to hear the message, we pray. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. In Genesis chapter 4, we have the very first uh, recorded record of somebody offering a sacrifice to God. And uh, there was two brothers named Cain and Abel. And they brought their offerings to God. Now it's pretty obvious to me that Adam and Eve, their mother and father, must have taught their sons how to offer sacrifices. And they realized that a sacrifice was needed to atone for their sins. The Lord respected Abel's offering because it was offered in faith, the Bible tells us. And Abel brought a lamb from his flock. Down through the Bible history, men brought offerings of cattle and sheep and goats. In fact, in the uh, four other books of Moses after Genesis, the, almost the entire books are filled with the instructions on how to properly offer a sacrifice to God. The writer of the Hebrews explained that the offerings for sin that the children of Israel made could not take away sin. I'd like to go there and read that with you this morning in Hebrews chapter 10. If you don't mind looking along. Hebrews chapter 10, beginning at verse number 1. For the law having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, 
can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. For then would they not have ceased to be offered? Because that the worshipers once purged should have had no more conscience of sins. But in those sacrifices there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of, goat, of bulls and of goats should take away sins. So we see that God had the children of Israel to offer sacrifices of, of animals because they represented, they were symbols of the sacrifice that was to come. And that was the sacrifice that Christ made on Calvary for our sins. When Abraham was going to Mount Moriah to sacrifice his son Isaac, he asked his father, he said, Behold, Father, uh, you have the fire and you have the wood and you have the, you have the knife, uh, but where is the uh, offering that we're going to offer to God? And Abraham said, Son, God will provide himself a lamb. And God did just that. When Abraham was about to plunge the knife into his son's breast, the Lord stopped him saying, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither thou do anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thine son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes, and looking, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and, the offer, and offered it, <coughs> excuse me, and offered him up for a burnt offering instead of his son. It is thought by Bible historians that the place where Abraham offered his son Isaac was the same place where 18 centuries later God offered up his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, as the sacrifice for sins for all mankind. Peter, in his first letter uh, to the churches, he said in chapter 1, uh, verse 15, uh, I think we'll read a little bit there. We're over in 1 Peter chapter 1 now. Peter was talking about this sacrifice that Christ made. In chapter 1, uh, verse 21, Peter said, I'm sorry, oh, read through, okay. <laughs> in verse 15, excuse me. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15. But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And if ye call upon the Father, who without respect of persons judges according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. For as much as ye know, that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, such as silver or gold, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without spot and without blemish. So Christ offered himself. He is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. For you are not redeemed from sin by the pre but for you are redeemed from sin by the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish, without spot, who truly was foreordained before the foundation of the world. God had a plan in place before He ever created the universe. He already knew that that plan was going to happen, that Christ would die for our sins so that we can be reconciled to God. God the Father, this great plan is the only one that will work. If we reject Christ, we can never, never, never be saved. We can never be saved and we must spend eternity to suffer with the devil and his angels in that place called hell. John the Baptist was declared to be the greatest prophet that ever lived because he proclaimed this truth, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. 
Jesus has opened a way back to God the Father. That's why he said, I am the way. He is the only way. He said, I am the truth. He is the only truth. And you know, in this hour we're living in, folks, truth is falling in the streets. I'm so glad that the author of truth is still with us. That he's still the truth. He's still the way. And he's still the life. Jesus, by his sacrifice on the cross at Calvary, has paid the price for our sins. We were born in sin and we were slave to sin. Paul the Apostle said, you were slaves to sin, but now through, listen, the blood of Christ, you are made free from sin. The question is, how does this help us who are still dying in our sins? We must come to God. And pray, asking him to forgive us for our past sins, believing that Christ died in our place. First, we must acknowledge we have sinned. Lord, I admit I have sinned. A lot of people won't do that, but that's the first step. And then second, ask God to forgive our sins. God, Lord, please forgive me of all the sins that I have done. And then third, to believe what God said. He said in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, If we confess our sins, He will forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Behold the Lamb of God. Jesus died for you and I, for our sins. Whosoever believes on Him will not perish, but have everlasting life. The lamb has been provided. God himself provided the lamb. No other lamb, no other sacrifice was good enough. Not even Mother Teresa in all the good work she did could atone for her own sins. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Today I proclaim to you, behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Surrender now to Christ. Let Him have His way in your life. Accept His sacrifice that He has made for you. As someone has aptly said, you can trust the man who died for you. Now is the time to confess our sins. Now is the time to surrender to Christ. Today is the day. Now is the time. We don't know that there will be a tomorrow. We have no promise that there will be a tomorrow. But today we are here. Today we can yet seek God. Today we can yet find Him. And if we will confess our sins to Christ, there will be a change in you completely. Amen. Amen. You will experience the joy of the Lord in your soul. You know, when I met the Lord that night, I really didn't know what to expect. But in faith, I confessed my sins. And I remember how the joy of the Lord just flooded into my soul. That old heavy condemnation that I felt in my heart for all the bad I had done just lifted off me and went away. And I became new in Christ. The old things were truly passed away. And God can do that for every single person in my hearing this morning. Anyone who will surrender to Christ will find deliverance, will find peace, will find the joy of the Lord. Oh, seek the Lord while he may be found. Whew. Do you know the joy of sins forgiven, the songwriter said. Do you know the bliss the blood wash know? Oh, that healing that comes from heaven where the precious, precious healing waters flow. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Don't wait any longer, for tomorrow may be too late. You know, folks, I sincerely believe that God is winding things up. He said, I'm going to make a short work of this. Well, a hundred thousand years from now in eternity, 
this little 7,000 years, this great tribulation we are passing through will be very small in comparison. But what God is doing is absolutely marvelous. He's going to restore the entire creation and make it as it was in the days of Eden. He's going to wipe from the universe every trace of sin, every trace of evil. Oh, I want to be in that world, folks. I'm getting ready to go. I'm ready to go. I wonder if you are. Let's stand together. Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. He's ready to take away your sin this morning if you'll surrender your heart and life to Him. How about you? Are you tired of the way that you're going? Are you weary and worn down? Are you heavy with the past? Oh, come to Christ and find deliverance. He'll do what no program could ever do for you. He'll do more than any man can do for you. He'll do more than any organization can do for you. Oh, if you'll come to him, you'll find the relief and the peace and the joy that only he can give. How about you this morning? Will you seek the Lord while he may be found? He's here this morning. He's ready to meet with us. He's down here. Come down to the altar in the front and pray. Seek God. Let the ministers have a word of prayer with you. Amen. God is able to help you if you'll surrender your heart to him. Amen. All right. Well, anyone else coming? I'm waiting on you. I know this wasn't a very long message, but it's an important one. The Lamb of God that takes away your sins. All right, a couple of the brethren would come down and pray this morning with this one that's come. Amen. Anyone else want to come and pray? Father, we thank Thee for Thy gracious help this morning. Pray now You'd bless each one as they leave and bless us around the altar today. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen.